Our region's business is sponsored by PNC for the achiever in you. Our region's business, improving our economy, creating jobs, and strengthening communities. Innovation, collaboration, transformation, and the people making it happen. Join us as we take a closer look at our region's business. Now, here's your host, Bill Flanagan. Today on Our Region's Business, attracting and retaining diverse talent. It's a big issue for our region. Today we'll find out about a new effort to do something about it. But first, it's about 33 days until Donald Trump is expected to take office as President of the United States. For industries that have taken a beating from unfair foreign trade, Inauguration Day can't come soon enough. Our region's steel industry may well be welcoming a tougher stance on trade and a more business-friendly approach to public policy in general. Mario Longhi is here to talk about it. He is president and CEO of United States Steel Corporation. And Mario, great to have you here. Good, Good to be here, Bill. Thanks. Yeah, I, 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 you've been all over the national and, and even international press over the last couple of weeks talking about your optimism about what's looking like a significant change in U.S. policy when it comes to unfair trade. Why are you so bullish? Well, first of all, if, if you look at what U.S. Steel's capabilities are, we didn't wait for anybody to come help us when the situation got very difficult. U.S. Steel took the, the, the challenge head on, and if you look at the amount of progress that we've made in addressing the things that we could control, it's nothing short of remarkable. And that applied also to the outside environment, which we didn't control, but we felt that we had the right to go pursue a fair level playing field in order for us to really demonstrate all the capabilities that we, we bring forth in full. So when we had the difficult environment, uh, we put in place significant effort to make sure that the proper trade laws were clarified and that enforcement became a priority for the administration. And then we made an enormous amount of progress over the past two years. Now they stepped up just in the course of the last year or so and seem to be taking a much more Ab aggressive stance. Absolutely. That's the Obama administration. Right? I mean, actually, if you look back, uh, you know, the definition of uh, injury was introduced in the trade laws back in 1978. Huh. Wow. And uh, it's interesting that not many folks, even inside of Congress and the administration, understood the full intent of the law. It, it was so much so that our teams revisited everything that was discussing, discussed during the implementation of that particular uh, theme inside of trade that uh, the, the injury doesn't need to occur for a prolonged period of time for you to have the protection of the law. If you have behavior that can lead to injury, companies are already entitled to that and nobody really understood it. Hmm. So that is a part of how injury is today analyzed, and there, there are several metrics that are in place to define uh, all of the elements of injury, and, uh, and the application of the law now is much more clear. Uh, also, with the passage of the Enforce Act, we are now having border control much better prepared. It's a work in progress, mm -hmm. both with the, the uh, Department of Commerce, the International Trade Commission, as well as border control, because they're going to have to learn how to be very effective, effective with the new sets of tools that have been made available to them. So things were beginning to move in the right direction uh, from a federal policy standpoint. Well, where do you see the Trump administration? Can they take this farther, move faster? Is that what you're expecting to see from them? Well, if you listen to all of the messages that the, the incoming administration is issuing, uh, playing by the rule of law has been a constant. Mm -hmm. If you listen to the fact that we can re revitalize our economy to a more meaningful level, that will also play a very positive role for manufacturing and for the country in general. So everything that you hear pretty much uh, uh, aligns. There is probably a convergence of factors this time around that can give a significant uplift to businesses in, in the United States. You know, I've been in Pittsburgh since 1982. I started out as a reporter covering uh, the, the challenges the steel industry faced back then. A lot of it revolved around 
uh, foreign competition. But what's different now? That was pretty devastating for our region a generation ago. How does what's happening now compare to what we experienced then? Well, I think you, you just need to look at the way in which globalization has evolved over the past 30, 40 years. Uh, in those days, you did not have a Chinese uh, company participating in the market the way that they have today. China today is responsible for more than half of the capacity in the world, and they are responsible for the vast majority of the overcapacity that exists out there. Um, the overcapacity theme is one that you can apply to just about every country. Mm. Probably the United States is the only country that does not have overcapacity. It still remains the most at attractive country uh, as a, from a market perspective. And it's the country that plays by the rule of law every single day for the most part. So uh, the differences are enormous. Mm. If you look at today the, the development of products and, and you're exposed to the cyber world, uh, hacking and industrial espionage have combined in a way that is very detrimental. So I think th there are fundamental shifts, not only in the magnitude of how the world is different, but in the breadth in context in how the world has become different. Can, can we get a handle on this? Can we do a better job of protecting our industries and assuring their competitiveness without undoing all of global trade and all of these international relationships? Yes, we can. And, but I would like to, to make an observation. Sometimes uh, the word protectionism is misunderstood. Many people interpret protectionism, protectionism as uh, that we don't want to compete and that just we just want a favor from someone or from the government. And that's absolutely wrong. All that we ask for is that the rules that apply, they apply to everyone. Mm -hmm. And in that environment, we will compete against anybody, head on. And I'm sure that we can win. As a matter of fact, you know, every little bit of opportunity where the level playing field gets in place, we show the, the potential for competitiveness that we have. So I think that that's why I'm pretty positive as to what American manufacturing and our company can do in that environment. Well, when, when we come back, I want to pick up, bring it a little more, uh, a little closer to home, because uh, I've watched over the decades the investments your company and other other folks in the in the materials industries around here have made in technology and in getting better. Talk a little bit more about what more we can do in, in Pennsylvania and especially here in our region sure. to try to uh, make it flourish even more. We'll be back in a moment with Mario Longhi from uh, United States Steel. Stay with us.